So Kevin McCarthy, you're a partner in the private equity group at Mishcon Drea, and I hope that this is a good opportunity for us to talk a little bit about the way your world is changing at the moment and, and the way, well, the way deals are being done. Can you sort of shed a bit of light on how the landscape is changing? Sure. I mean, it's been a difficult time for the private equity industry in general over the last sort of four or five years or so. Um, there's been a distinct lack of debt in the market, and I think that's brought the market in certain areas to close to a standstill. But one, one of the things I would say, though, is that the world of business, a bit like the world of nature, hates a vacuum. And so that space is and has been filled by other new entrants to the market. And one of the interesting things that we've seen is the increasing rise of private capital in the wider sense starting to play a role in the, in the private equity sector. And so when you say private capital, exactly what do you mean by that? Um, what I mean is that private capital in the widest possible sense, so not just private money, although there is a significant amount of individual high net worth individuals bringing their money to London and making that felt within the London business uh, arena. But it's, it's private capital also in the sense of family offices, sovereign funds, privately owned funds, all of these different sources of private capital coming to play in the private equity sector and each have a role to play. Have institutional deals fallen by the wayside completely, do you think? No, I don't think they have. I think actually, the, depending on which part of the private equity market you actually look at, certain areas of that sector have actually been quite busy. The top end of the market, because it really thrives on debt, has been much quieter. There has not been the same amount of debt or the willingness on the part of banks to put debt into the market. But if you move down into the mid-market and the lower mid-market, actually there's been a, a, a large amount of activity and those deals have been done by institutions and in a sense the private capital part of that is a new entrant and adds a new angle to uh, how that part of the market has been operating. How does it affect your work day to day? It affects my work because as a firm, Mishkondorea actually is very focused on the private capital sector of the market. So if you go back 10 years ago or so, there are firms who do institutional work, there are other firms who do private work. And there was a, a definite line between the two, but increasingly that line has become blurred. And I think that space where private capital, private individuals and business, where they meet is increasingly in vogue and in focus at the moment. Private capital, private individuals have more value and, and more uh, money to spend and therefore they're competing against institutions in relation to some of those deals. And so from a personal point of view, um, acting for some of these family offices, some of these high net worth individuals, they are doing transactions which are effectively private equity deals, albeit you're acting for individuals and the, the corporate entities of these individuals in the context of private equity transactions. And what kind of deals are they wanting to do? I mean, are they very different from the kind of institutional deals you'd have been doing? Are, they, are the motivations different, if you like? Um, they can be. Mm. They can be very similar. You can have these deals which are motivated purely by the finances and the potential investment returns. And private individuals and, and their entities are just as interested in that type of investment as are most institutional or more traditional institutions. Um, but is there a there different is, sort of risk profile? Or? Um, what I would say is that there is, a, there is an additional element and that is sometimes a deal can make sense for, um, for a private individual or, or, or for a family office because it's more of an emotional investment and they're not necessarily tied to the returns because the, the ultimate beneficiaries are, are they themselves rather than a body of shareholders who will effectively look to see what returns have been made and therefore deals which might not make sense to an institution, because it's more difficult to justify to the ultimate shareholder, might actually make sense to an individual or to a family office because there's another aspect to it. There's more of an emotional pull or, or some other strategic reason as to why this is a good deal for us. And so uh, I think that brings an, an extra dynamic and an interesting dynamic to acting for the, the private side of the equation as opposed to the institutional side, which we also act for. Uh, yeah, you mentioned the different dynamic there. I mean, it must make for quite a, an interesting relationship between legal advisor and, and private individual? It does. I mean, the relationship is still very much one of lawyer to advisor, and therefore, first and foremost, we are lawyers and we give legal advice, and that advice has to be right. Um, I think the interesting dynamic is that when acting for institutions, um, you're very often acting with 
or, or working with people who know exactly what they're looking for and they're looking for process and they're looking for execution as opposed to if you're acting for families and individuals when they say what do you think they actually mean what do you think they, they want your view on something possibly because they haven't yet formed their own view and therefore it's more of a personal relationship you're dealing with the decision maker you're not dealing with people who are instructed by others to make sure that the deal is executed you're dealing one-to-one -one with the ultimate decision makers and so that can actually act for or um, it, it can make for a very interesting dynamic between the lawyer and the client. And do you see the trends continuing, this trend for, for more private capital? I do actually because I, th I think London is, is such a, a honeypot of activity. There's, there's so much economic activity which is flowing through London um, and where you have that then you know, deals will be done. Your money will find a, a, a place to invest and I think I don't see that stopping anytime soon, so you know, obviously I hope that's the case, um, but I haven't seen anything which would indicate that uh, that would be otherwise. Kevin McCarthy, very good to talk to you. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you.